everyone, this is Adesh Namprami and we are back here at Ankubikan. And in today's class, which will be a very, very important topic because CV and an application and combining them both being a CV inside an application is something that is very useful not only if you are a student of HSC or HSC but also if you are some someone who is searching for a job if you need to send an application to anybody if you're at your university or if you're finished university if you're right now working or from any field of life this is a lesson that everyone requires as a result this class is super important i hope that you enjoy throughout the class so to start off we have to say what a cv is a cv full form which is curriculum vitae will actually require or it will contain details of you you being that in that way because you're applying for a job most of the time cv is used to recruit people as a result you have to make sure that inside your cv you uh, place your achievements your work experiences your uh, past activities your extracurricular activities if you have any your talents and skills uh, your achievements being that uh, if you have any achievements based on this work or from any other ways your academics which means that how much you have studied already and so on. So in this case, inside your CV, all of these should be maintained. But in today's class, I have tried to shorten it a bit because we are learning these CV for our HSC standards, right? And if you give your CV to your boss or to someone who you, whom you want them to recruit you, in that case, you have to make sure that that person gets it in a formal way because you need to give a good impression to them, right? So if you want to give the, them a good impression, in that case, you have to make it sound formal and look formal, which means that you need an application. So first of all, you need to write an application where you will be addressing the person that you are someone who is eligible for this job, you have these skills and requirements and you are highly interested because of your some positives. And then after putting this application, you have to also mention that here is my CV and then you have to put the CV attachments and after clicking on the attachment, then they will look at all of your CV details. But if you do not write the application with the CV, in that case, they might find it very informal. So in that case, you have to put both the formalities and the CV uh, being a very integral part together. So without any further ado, let's at first look at what a formal application looks like. So this, the question here says, Write a CV to the headmaster or headmistress for the post of an assistant teacher or lecturer. So this is once again a question that I have taken from your past year question papers for your HSC. Uh, and if this question arrives, you know that you are very lucky because the entire answer is provided here. Or you can also tweak a few sentences here and there. So in this CV, in this question, what you are going to do is at first, you are going to give a short application and then continue with your CV. So what do we do? I have merged both the format and the original answer together. So you see here at first, we will put the date on the top left corner. It is essential that we put the date. So the date can either be placed in this way or I can say January, February, March, April, May. So or I can say 10, 0, 5, 2, 0, 14. Both ways are okay. All right. So in this case, you can also write in this way. Then you will write the designation. The designation of the person you are sending it to. So because I am saying that I am writing a CV to the headmaster or the headmistress, so for that reason I have written the headmistress. Now sometimes we do not know the names of the headmistresses. So if you do not know the name, that is fine. You can just write the headmistress and continue. But if you do know her name, then when will I put the name? I will put the name in the middle here, okay? 
and in the middle you don't have to put any any line gap okay just write it as it is make sure that you start from the left hand side of your page right after the margin all right okay now x girls high school so this is the name of the school because the headmistress who the headmistress is belonging to is unsure of so as a result we will write the name of the head write the name of the place where he, she is a headmistress of or let's say this is not a headmistress let's say you are writing to an editor so in that case you have to write the organization's name of the place you are working so in this case what am i writing i am writing the name of the organization where this designation belongs to okay then i will write an address so in this case i have only written gulshan comma dhaka so who does this address belong to this address is not my address this is the head mistress address which means that is this the sender or the receiver this is the receiver so in the beginning i will give a description of my receiver not the sender the description of the sender comes totally after everything when we write a stamp or when we uh describe the stamp and then we put to and from in both sides when we write a letter right but in this case this is not necessary so then you write the name, address the address does not necessarily have to be in one sentence because sometimes you also want to add your house number your road number your uh, street number the name of your street and so on right so there can be many details so one tip that i can give you is make sure that your address is in two lines maximum but do not may do not write your address on and on and on till this part no try to put both lines of your address one after the other in this part which means that if this is your entire copy divide your copy in four parts if you divide your copy in four parts in the first uh, fourth in the first fourth of your page you should make sure that this is aligned in the first fourth one by further in the first quarter of your page this should be aligned this in this way okay then comes the subject so the subject it has to be a very formal straight forward way you cannot write this is my application no you'll just clean and clear say what is this application for the post of an assistant teacher or lecturer so why what the question is why do we write the subject in this way this is because when we try to describe the subject in more than one sentence it becomes very complex and the person who is reading your application is actually a very uh, we can say that that person is a very busy person because we consider that person to be someone of a higher nature or someone who is of a higher authority than i am so as a result giving that person that uh, responsibility or giving that person that honor will mean that in the subject part we will try to keep it as short as possible so that when they read the application when they first click on it if it's an email or when they first open my application by reading the subject they can understand that oh okay so this person has given me a subject why because uh, they have given me this application why because they want to become a teacher or a lecturer in my at my institution so you get it why you have to keep the subject short so that it's self explanatory so that they do not need to uh, properly scan sometimes if the subject is too long then uh, while scanning they might find it boring or they might find it disturbing and then they might throw it away right i'm just saying that hypothetically this can occur so let's not go there then we can write sir or madam in this case there should be madam because we are uh, writing towards the headmistress right then let's see in response to your advertisement published in the daily star on 4th may 2014 for the post of an assistant teacher in your school i want to offer myself as a candidate for the post so what i request to all of you students is when you read the first sentence this first sentence that you have already found here you can take a screenshot of this and memorize i will not just say memorize word to word i can say this 
learn it properly, learn the format properly and later on you'll see in your exam if something close to this comes, you can use these exact words. You can start off by saying in response to your advertisement posted in dash, I uh, for the post of dash on dash, dash being the date and then say I want to offer myself as a dash. So you see how this sentence is actually a structure and this can help you in the future here when you want to write your own essay, right? My educational qualifications and other important particulars are submitted below for your kind consideration. So uh, once again, you are saying that your educational qualifications and other important particulars, they are already written down below. And why did you say for your kind consideration? Because once again, this is a formal application. So these are some phrases that you need to know and remember when you are writing your application. Okay. Uh, so now we see the format of my CV. So let's see, let's say that you, uh, your name is Sonia Islam. So in that case, starting from the absolute left, you have to write your name, colon, Sonia Islam, father's name, uh, our father's name is given here, mother's name, your mother's name is given here, present address, permanent address. So sometimes your present and permanent address can be both the same. In that case, you can write present address and then you can write same as above, okay? So in this place, you could write same as above. They both mean the same thing, all right? And or you can do something else. You can say present and permanent address here. You can write present and permanent address, then give a colon and then write just once. So in that case, you do not need these two lines. Okay. Date of birth is written in this way. Now, sometimes a lot of people write uh, date of birth or these dates in different formats. They can write in this format, M-M-D-D-Y-Y, right? What I suggest for your HSC exams is to write in this format. The date comes first, then the month, then the year. It's just uh, highly suggested, okay? Then the marital status here is single. So this is once again mentioned. Your sex, which is your gender, is female. Your religion is Islam. Nationality here means uh, where uh, you have actually been originated from. So you have mentioned Bangladeshi and you've also written by birth. So this by birth thing is not necessary, but you can write it if you want. Then you can give your cell phone, which is this, this, this. Uh, I have written XXX here, but like you can give any cell phone, yeah. Uh, then you don't actually have to give your real cell phone number, by the way. You can make it up. Then you give your email, it's sonia at the gmail.com or you can make your own gmail or you can give your original email if you want. Then because I am uh, wa wanting to become a lecturer or a teacher here at this school, for this reason here I am looking, uh, writing my experiences and my skills. What is actually going to convince that particular person to hire me? So I say my computer literacy is office program MS Word, MS Excel, which means that I have already covered this before. My experiences, I have worked as an English teacher in Bangla Bazaar Girls High School, Dhaka. So you can also make this up once again. So because I have already been working as an English teacher. So you can see here, I am saying working, not what. Working means right now I'm working as an English teacher, okay? And if you want to say that you have already worked before and right now you are uh, you are currently unemployed or you are searching for a job, so you can you can also say worked as an English medium teacher uh, in Bangla Bazar Girls High School, Dhaka, in 2020, for example. Okay. So then, language skill. So language skill, you will be you have uh, uh, here. You see here, uh, Sonia has written. Fluent in Bangla and English and excellent at writing English. So what she is doing in this essay is constantly saying that English is her forte. Forte means whenever you have an advantage over anyone else's. All right. So she has properly mentioned it time and time again that she is excellent at writing English. So writing English is her plus point. So she's like telling them that now you can see that because I know both English and Bangla, but in writing English, I'm fluent or I'm an expert, so you can hire me. 
In support of my particulars mentioned above, attested copies of my certificates and testimonials are attached here with this application. Now, what if in this CV you have made stuff up? Maybe you are not working as a teacher here. Maybe you do not know of his program, MS Word, MS Excel, right? So in that case, uh, the person who is uh, handling your CV will also want uh, data, will also want physical information like physical slips or certificates and stuff. So if you have any certifications for let's say MS Word, MS Excel or uh, any proof that you have been working at, as an English teacher. So all of these certificates, all of these copies or scanned copies, if you are putting an email, you need to scan them. Or if you are putting, uh, giving it to them physically. So in that case, photocopies of all of your data or all of your certificates and things that are given as proof must be also provided. So you are also mentioning here. So see, this sentence from this till this should be, uh, should be not, uh, I'll say that it can be common for any CV that you write. Then we say that in the above circumstances, I hope and believe that you would be kind enough to consider my application and brought me to the post prayed for. So you are saying that because so many things uh, are already placed in this application, are placed in this CV. So because of this, I hope and believe that you will now be kind enough to give me a chance to talk to you at an interview or take me directly, uh, hire me as an English teacher, yeah? So then you'll finally write yours here faithfully or yours sincerely or whatever uh, salutations you want to write. Then underline and in this underline portion, you can put your signature if you want and then write Sonia Islam, which is your name and then write the date of your giving. So you can see here that date is actually being given twice right after the entire uh, CV or right after the entire application and also in the beginning of the application, right? So that was all for today's class. We have learned how to write an application and then to write a CV at first you need to write the basics of an application and then put your CV. Do not just start from the CV from the beginning, okay? I hope this class was informative enough for you. If you have any other questions, comment them down below. Thank you so much for watching and happy learning.